Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Terran vs. Zerg, where we find ourselves on the map Lightshade. Spotting here in the bottom right hand corner, playing with the red Zerg drones from Ukraine, we have none other than Bly. His opponent in the opposite corner with the blue SCVs from Poland, he goes by the name of Spirit. Spirit? I know some of you may be wondering, Loco, who the f is Spirit? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to bleep that out. Um, Spirit, he used to go by the name of Soul. Used to capitalize the L as well for some time. Um, I've casted him many times before on the YouTube channel. One of the exclusive members of the 7K MMR club. Recently though, for some reason, I don't really know exactly why, he decided to change his name from Soul to Spirit. I guess it's technically still in like the same spiritual category, right? Going from Soul to Spirit. Anyways, generally speaking, I don't think it's a very good idea, especially as a pro gamer, to change your nickname. Just because, you know, all you really have is your nickname and then your your playstyle and, and your gameplay, right? In general, I mean, unless you're playing a lot of offline events. Uh, no, even then, I don't think it's a great idea to change your nickname. Nah, I don't think it's a good idea to change your nickname, man. Just basic marketing, right? It's going to be much harder to make a name for yourself and to, you know, be valuable to a sponsor or a team if you kind of just, you know, throw the years of building up a name in the trash, right? I don't know. Anyways, he's probably got a good reason why he decided to change it. Either way, um, I know I posted a Terran vs. Zerk yesterday to the YouTube channel as well. So yesterday I covered Serral vs. Maru. In case you haven't seen that series yet, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this one. So you can go check it out after this video. Either way, there's no denying that it was some top-level Terran vs. Zerk and a really fun series. Usually I try to keep a little bit of time in between covering the same matchup again on the YouTube channel. But the thing is, this is Bly. So, I mean, even though it's technically a Zerg versus Terran, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be Bly versus Terran more so than anything else. At the very least, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping we're going to see a little bit of shenanigans right here from the Ukrainian player. He's very good, of course, at uh, yeah, trying to catch his opponent off guard and go for some cheeky builds. The thing is, Spirit here is very good. It feels a little uncommon to say Spirit. Anyway, Spirit here is very good at just playing a normal game of StarCraft. So after this Marine, he'll probably go Reactor and then, you know, put it onto the, the factory and we start pumping out a couple of Hellions, then a Starport and Tech Lab and Benchies and all that, right? He's very good at just playing a normal game. Speaking of normal game, okay, um, this is the exact opposite of that. Two and a half minute Roach Ward. That is an extremely quick Roach Ward. It's very important for the Terran player to figure out that something is going to be off because... I mean, right now, I guess there's no third hatch, so that's already something that he's scouting here. Um, if he just plays a normal game from here, there's got to be roaches in his face before a bench will possibly ever be out. So, three and a half minutes was, very, very, uh, was a very common timing for a roach warrant to come up, and then also a couple additional gases. Ooh. Brenda over here, actually, really needs to defend this section of the map. All right. She's ready to shoot some spines right there at that little reaper, man. Although, whoop, very nice grenade right there. Yeah, so three and a half minutes was normal. Okay, he's gonna get into the main base, and I think he's gonna scout it. Yep, he will. Six roaches already coming up. Anyways, since Benchy openers are once again very popular right now in Terran vs. Zerg, the three and a half minute roach warrant timing doesn't really work as well anymore. I mean, it still kind of works, but Benchy's obviously very good against roach based pushes. Okay, so what's the follow up gonna be? There's indeed that tech lab. Oh, uh. Uh, uh, okay, a little bit of misclicking, I suppose. Another tech lab coming up. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be Benchy production here. Two Marines at once. Bunker on the high ground. Low ground has already been evacuated. I mean, the roaches are coming up, but I don't really expect there's going to be that much damage he's going to be able to do. At the same time, actually, Hellions here in the bottom left and corner. A few roaches are even waiting on top of the ramp here in the natural expo. Pretty sure this is Bly looking at this and realizing he's got spotted. Yep. He'll just try and get whatever kills he can. But, um... Yeah, you know what? Getting two Hellions and an SCV. I mean, it's not what you're looking for, obviously, with this sort of opener. But it's probably the best you can hope for here after getting spotted. You really do want to prevent that Reaper from ever getting into the main base. So high-level decision-making right there by Bly to... Yeah, call it quits. It's very tempting there to just try and throw units at the wall. That's probably what I would do because I'm a little bit stubborn. I'm like, ah, you know what? Maybe there's a... Nope. And then I lose all the six roaches for free. Get absolutely nothing done. And then eventually I lose the game. Um, Bly instead decides to keep the units alive. Although, eh, there's still three roaches over here. He knows the timing at which the Benchy will fly out. So, eh, hello. We need to hit the SCVs. Come on. A little bit of a misclick. 
Ah, uh, yeah, a little bit of disjointed attacking here. I think it could have probably had like five workers or so. Anyways. So big picture. Well, five workers, I guess, in total throughout this game. Hello. Mule man? Mule, come on, dude. Okay, you know what? In the midst of chaos, apparently Spirit making a little bit of a mistake. Losing a few hundred minerals there, actually. The other roaches now also have come up over here in this section of the map. Siege tank obviously will be able to shut this down, but yeah, the lack of the... That's a little bit late now. The lack of that mule mining there definitely allows the Zerg player to catch up a little bit. Alright, so. There is a Benchy available. Obviously that harassment has also not been that amazing. Oh my god, there's already a Nidus network out and actually... <laughs> I wasn't even really paying attention there to the production tab. Apparently, Bly decided to go for a lair into the four gases and as well as a Nidus network. Now, already Spirit way ahead of the game, even though he didn't scout it until the scan, he was already ready to defend against it because he put that depot right there in the corner of the main to get vision of the ledge. Or I guess uh, the corner and the edges right there of his base. And there was already a Viking in the back of the main too. Anyways, still enough vision right here provided by this one pesky little roach with red hit points to... Put down a Nidus Worm right out at the third base of the Terran player. Or, well, third or fourth. Not a whole lot of drones over at the third base of the of the Terran, though. He's obviously heard Nidus Worm scream at this moment as well, so he knows that there's a worm out there somewhere. Liberated here trying to get some work done. Spore Crawler, though, is going to be able to push that back together with the Queens. Will the Queens also pop into the Nidus Worm? Maybe not. Maybe they will. 11 drones as a follow up, though, so I think this is just once again a little bit of Nidus harassment. Like, we don't see Nidus harassment in StarCraft 2, okay? We only see Nidus all in. Yeah, I think this is once again Bly saying, you know what? I'm probably not gonna be able to win the game with this push either. I mean, I'll try. But I'll probably not get that much work done. So I'll drone behind it and try to just, yeah, stay in the game instead. Okay, you should never lose a bench, obviously, to Corrosive file. Keep my crud back. If you pop it back into the worm, you can keep it alive for a little while longer. Siege tank in the main base, though. Overseer here trying to provide that high ground vision. SCVs are pulled away as well. Absolutely no way that this one is gonna go up. Very stellar defensive play here so far by the... Uh, <laughs> here's the queen. Transfuse? Uh. Very stellar defense so far here, though, by Spirit. Showing us why he's a member of the 7k MMR club. Because, I mean, playing the ladder in StockCraft 2, very much so comes down to like trying to not die to stupid stuff and so far he's been showing us how to not die to stupid stuff very well right very diligent scouting right there with that first reaper making sure he doesn't die to the nidus follow-up eater i mean very clean play here and as much as i'm complimenting bly here so far his strategies have been absolutely shut down i think we do need to scan here by the way uh mr spirit because if you don't scan here that creep is gonna get out of control there's three tumors here. They'll probably tumor their way all the way back towards the Zerg side of the map. The entire map will be painted with creep before you know it. So I wouldn't mind seeing a scan there. Yeah, he's decided to just... Uh, it's gonna it's gotta get very messy very quickly. He's decided to just let it go for now. It's gonna require far more scans in the future. All right, so 1-1 one, one just about to finish up here for the bio units. Step back is done, of course. Combat shield is also finished right now. This is a wonderful situation here for the Terran player, although... Is there an armory out? No armory yet, so he's not gonna be able to go into 2-2 right away, which I don't really like. I wish we had an armory here to go straight into the 2-2 upgrades. Either way, base at the 6 o'clock will be the night for now. Good counsel there by Bly. Who's in the meantime, by the way, going Roach Ravager Infester Queen 1-1 one, one upgrades. Gotcha, okay. So once upon a time, actually, Roach Ravager Infester was quite popular. So I remember the good old days in StarCraft 2 where... The... What's it called? The Infestor's Fungal Growth used to be a root rather than a slow. So these days you basically just heavily slow down the units! Okay. These days you just heavily slow down the units when you fungal them. For a long time in StarCraft 2 though, it used to be like a full on a root. So what you could do... So this was the case in Wings of Liberty and then also in Heart of the Swarm if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, they changed it at some point quite some time ago. What you could do is use the Fungal Growth together with the Ravagers. So when Fungal Growth was first around... You know, there was no, there was no Ravager in the game. The Ravager didn't get added, uh, didn't get added to the, the Zerg units until much later. It was fine back then, but people figured out very quickly that you could use the Ravagers in combination with Fungal Growth. Basically, you would Fungal an air unit, and then you would Corrosive Bile it down, right? So, Fungal, Medivac, Corrosive Bile on top of it, everything dies. 
Still technically something you can pull off, but now there's at least a little bit of counterplay for the Terran player, which is obviously much better. Alright, so, even though Bly was in the driver's seat for the first, I would say, eight or so minutes of this game, everything is now Spirit. Right, he's got a large army out. Ooh, very nice corrosive balls there. I'm not mistaken, there was even a medevac caught in that, but also two of those siege tanks, which is absolutely critical. Keeping those alive here if you want to continue the harassment is super important. Yeah, he's still gonna try and slow push it forward. Honestly, I think with two more siege tanks here, could have been a lethal push. Right now, I think there should probably eventually be enough units for the Zerg player to push this back. Yeah, the creep over here is very annoying. Or like the lack of creep, I suppose, right? It's very annoying for the Zerg player because he can't really fight this very effectively. Base acquired at the 3 o'clock position on the map. And already all the way up north, we see Spirit now taking his 4cc as well. One Marine, one Medivac. Medivac doesn't have a lot of hit points, but apparently it doesn't matter. This is a slow push, of course, from the Terran player. So at the same time, while he's slow pushing with Siege Tanks, the Zerk is going for a big run-by right here with a couple of Roaches. Supply Depot's here making it tough for those units to get into a good spot. Jimmy still working on the hatch. <laughs> I don't think he spotted the base up north though, no. So he's gonna find out about it right now. I think that might just be enough to kill the Planetary Fortress, but at the same time, Spirit is gonna go after the Expo here. Okay, that should be a ton of dead SCVs at the very least, and maybe even still the Command Center as well. Yep, so the hatchery does go down. That's the third base of the Zerg that's gone. Drones have already been evacuated towards a new location. Reinforcing terror units are arriving on location. And even though 18 SCVs end up going down, at least the planetary will live. 24 workers versus 15 killed. Jimmy, still gunning down the hatch. It's on his work, man. Someone's gonna do it. It's beautiful. Jimmy does not mess around. Here's his crew members coming up. He's a veteran, man. He's been... Well, he's been around for longer. Like, these guys are literally a few minutes, like, you know, younger than him. Come on, let at least... No kill stealing, bro! What the hell was that? At least let Jimmy finish the job. Very rude, dude. Typical MOBA players over here. Look at them. It's the jungler, the top. Can't believe it. Very toxic. Anyways. Oh, it's a team game, look. Okay, fine. Fine. I guess it is a team game. All right, Hive is just about to finish. Roaches and Ravages now with Tunneling Claws. At least the Roaches. Um, have we ever seen 2-2, two, two, by the way? Okay, yeah, I, I wasn't really paying attention there to the exact timing of all of those upgrades. I would love to see 3-3 three, three start. So the reason why I bring it up is because Marine Tank is obviously pretty good against Roach Ravager in the first place, but it's especially good when 3-3 three, three is done. Yeah, I would go as far as to say that, like, as soon as 3-3 three, three is done, Marine Marauder, Siege Tank, Medivac, it just... It, it just trades too efficiently with Roach Ravager, okay? Unless you get a massive fungal growth. It's usually, for the Terran player at that point, a fantastic position to be in. Oh, he's looking for a huge fungal. There's a couple. A couple of Marines are being caught. Okay. Concussive Shell's now also coming up for Spirit, so he's adding in some Marauders. Wouldn't mind seeing the plus three starting up too, because he does the money for it. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, we do have a Baneling Nest now. Okay. And he's going plus one melee. So I think he's already transitioning towards another unit composition. Yeah, there's the Ultralisk Cavern coming up as well. So, Roach, Ravager, Ling, Bane, Ultralisk, Infester. <laughs> I think ultimately we'll probably see a transition away from Roaches and Ravagers because it's just not a very efficient style. Either way, this is nice. Base at the 6 o'clock will be the night. Command center also the night, but obviously the CC can fly. And actually, that was a kill, it looks like. No cancel on that. So 300 minerals plus a drone drown. <laughs> a drone drown to drain? Sure, loco. <laughs> a Zerk tongue twister. Fungal? Can we fungal? Come on. All right. Hatchery once again goes down. A couple of roaches here trying to outrange the planetary fortress. Command center over here also taking a lot of damage, although a few unseached tanks. We'll be able to clear that very easily. Okay, this is a fun game. Man, there's so much action everywhere. What's the APM at? Alright. You can see the average actions per minute here by these guys. Definitely not low whatsoever. It'll probably only go up from here. Um, did he see the transition, by the way? No, he hasn't seen the Ultralisk Cavern, but there's already ghosts coming up, which I love. Spirit here knows that... There's pretty much no way Zerk is going to keep playing Roach Ravager when Terran's going 3-3. So, by the way, that plus 3 
Yeah, armor is a little bit late. He hasn't seen any ultras, if I'm not mistaken, but he's already making the core here. I mean, EMP alone already makes the ghost very good, although he's got quite a few ghosts in order for, for just EMP to be justified. Uh, you can even, I guess, you can just use steady targeting of Ravagers too. Either way, he's, uh, he's anticipating a transition, I'm pretty sure, towards either Brute Lords or, for example, Ultralisks. There's seven of them on the production tab right now. That's a lot. Grand Carapace is finishing up here for the Zerg. Chitin is plating as well, so it's going to make these Ultras extremely tanky. Seven of them, though. It is going to be a little bit awkward. I don't want to tell you the amount of times I've accidentally gotten all of my Ultralisks. Oh my god, that's one way of getting the Banelings to connect. Uh, the amount of times I've gotten my Ultra stuck behind my Roaches and Ravagers, because they're so thick, and so are Roaches and Ravagers. Man, huge fight right there for Blido, shutting down so much of that Terran army. I don't think that the uh, Roach army could really trade much more efficiently. Okay, Ultra's in the front, Ravager's in the back. There's the Corrosive Bile shutting down a couple more Siege Tanks if the Ultras don't finish the job already. Medivac's here, though, ready to pick this all up, and at least evacuate some of those units back to safety. Another medevac. Eight marines this time around in this one. Do you think Jimmy is still around? I don't know, man. Jimmy might be here. Part of the original crew. Showing the others where the hatchery used to be last time around. And it turns out it's in the exact same spot. Roach Ravager based armies, though. No council on that one. Not nearly as quick as Ling Bane based armies. So it's quite difficult to get your units in the right spot at the right time. Bly also not really making it easy for himself, though. With, like... The way he's spreading around the bases, right? So he's got the 6 o'clock taken, but also the bases all the way in the top right hand corner of the map. It's... Yeah, it's quite the distance. So... There's a Spire coming up, I guess, to go for some Corruptors, maybe? Try and shoot down either Liberators or some of those Medivacs. Because right now, I mean, how many Ghosts are we on? Nine Ghosts already! So Ghosts against Ultras is an insanely good composition. As a matter of fact, Ghosts are like the ultimate late game unit for Terran versus Zerg. Because of both EMP being able to shut down spellcasters, but obviously also, you know, that snipe ability that's fantastic against the heavy hitters. So the big units from the Zerg can just be sniped. Very nicely done. The biggest weakness, though, for the Ghost is obviously Lings and Banes. Just good old Zerglings and Bane Lings usually get rid of that army quite well. So if you go too heavily into the Ghost, and honestly, 13 Ghosts, it's definitely heading in that direction. Uh, Ling Bane can just shut that down. Okay. Would love to see plus three melee starting up, but I guess uh, at this point Blight doesn't have... Well, he's got a bunch of money in the bank, but he's not a very wealthy Zerk. Spirit, calmly, collectively, staying alive in this game. Trying his very best to pull the game to go the distance. Okay, nicely done. Trying to acquire another base right now in the bottom left too. There is a changeling underneath it. That just timed out, so at least Bly knows that the base is coming up. Man, that's so many ghosts! 14 ghosts?! I mean, there's 9 ultras, which is way more ultras than what we normally see, so it's maybe justified, but god, that feels like a lot. Yeah, no creep spread over here either, so it's gonna be quite difficult to get a good fight in. This is a very complex army, by the way, to properly... Look at the ultra! Oh my god! These ultras are gonna get popped. If you're a Zerk player, I think you should close your eyes for a little bit, man. Pretty sure what we're gonna see is boop, 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 and then, yeah, everything dies. At least the Ultras. Nice zoning right there by the Terran player as well. Okay, well, it's ha it hasn't happened yet. Small Marine Marauder Army taking down another base, too. We've seen a lot of hatcheries go down, by the way, so far. Okay, Ghost once again in the back. Here they go! Rapid fire! Okay. Ultras didn't want to go off creep, which I think is good. 20 drones, though, have already been killed. And at this point, I mean, the economy from Bly has been hit extremely hard. Spirit, starting to pile up uh, a little bit too much money in that bank of his. Wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of additional production, although maybe he's setting himself up for a transition here with a fusion core? Nah, I'm pretty sure that's just gonna be for... He goes seven more ultras?! What?! Wait, we're going 14 ultras versus 14 ghosts?! I mean, I guess two of them just got killed here for free. Um, unless there's a fungal growth on all of the ghosts, I can only see that going absolutely awful. I mean, there are queens available, so transfusions obviously can keep these units alive for a little while longer, but you gotta be very quick on the, on the clicking. Widow Mine over there blocking that expo from going up. Yeah, he's just trying to, I guess, max out on uh, Liberators and Vikings right now. 
God, that's a lot of Ultras. There's an Ultra even patrolling back and forth, man. He's pacing. Poor guy. The stress is getting a little much to him. 14 Ultras, though. We'll be able to get, I guess, a Planetary Fortress taken care of very quickly. <laughs> chomp, chomp, chomp. Yeah, that base is not going to live for very long. Luckily, they're merciful Ultras, and at least some of these units will stay alive. Oh, here come the, the Ghosts. Okay, a couple of the Bailings do uh, sneak through that army. There's a little bit of overkilling as well going on on these Ultras, though, because there's like seven snipes on each and every one of them. It's a little bit much. He wants to continue the channeling, uh, channeling of that ability for a little while longer, so he uses a scan there to try and get the high ground vision. But uh, not finishing off that Ultralisk army just yet. Bly finally did get this base up over here once again. He's gonna need a very big fungal though. Ooh, or a very good bailing connection, that also works. What a strange set of unit compositions uh, have we seen from Bly so far in this game though, but it's kind of working, right? Okay, here we go, there's that fungal growth that I was talking about. Queens transfusing to the best of their abilities as well. And ghosts are pretty much the only units that remain, it seems, from this army. There come the bailings as well, though they're kind of disjointed from the rest of this attack because they weren't done morphing in yet. One of the ghosts apparently here, ready to uh, take one of the hits to the face. Okay. That fight went way better than I thought, although... Yeah, those Banelings definitely should have not tried it right there with those two Marauders. Six more Ultras are coming up! It is like a full anti ultralisk army with Liberators, Marauders, and then Ghosts. And Bly is like, nope, you know what I need? More Ultras! So far, it's kind of working. He doesn't really have the money, I guess, to make a transition here either. Oof, God. There's another, like, five ghosts getting picked off. Never say die. Anyways. I think eventually, though, there should be a little bit too much Terran, right? Eh. Corrosive Pile connecting over there as well. Does he have the cloaking upgrade? He doesn't. I don't know why there's no cloaking upgrade here for these ghosts, man. When you make this many of them, there is zero excuse not to have both of the upgrades for them. We don't even see the second upgrade either, although I guess uh, Fungal Growth could still take care of even the Cloaking Field. <sighs> alright, 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 alright. Seven drones coming up. In the meantime though, even though Spirit is not making the most cost-efficient trades here, he is mining a ton of stuff. Like, he's basically taking the position of the Zerk in this game, where he's out mining his opponent but trading less efficiently, if I'm not mistaken. Never mind, Zerk still traded way worse. <laughs> 22 goes though and 17 ultras on the production. Or I guess on the units kill tab, rather. Either way, this is where that money for the Terran player will start skyrocketing once again. There it is. Three plus thousand minerals. I mean it. It's a lot. Liberator shutting down a couple of the mining bases of the Zerk for at least a little bit. Eight more drones end up getting killed here as well. There's a Liberator down south too. Okay, a little bit of creep over here, so maybe this fight could actually work out quite well here for the, uh, the Zerk! Ooh, Bailings! Getting to a decent position, but nice pickup right there by Spirit at the last possible second. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot that the Zerk player can do to shut down any of these bases, right? So I'm pretty sure over the course of, like, the next few minutes, he's just gonna bleed out. Bly always plays these games where I feel like he's just making it so painful for himself. Because <laughs> this just... You know, at, at this point as a Zerk player, I'm thinking, oh my god, just make the pain go away. Okay, apparently he was thinking the same thing right there as he decides to tap out. GG is cold. And it is indeed gonna be our Polish Terran player who will be the victor today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now, though, take care, stay awesome, don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.